clouds and rain all week long in Missouri, but I still found an upland sandpiper for the very first time. Spring has brought babies and we have these goslings, hopefully they don't get picked off by that Swainson's hawk, and hooded mergansers are hanging out in the local water, perched on top of duck boxes. A lone cattle egret made an appearance, strutted for me, and Forster's turns came flying in and gave me a lot of angelic shots, just hovering in very high winds 15 feet from the truck, diving left and right all over the place. Must have been 20 of them. Two wood duck drakes escort a hooded merganser like police across the body of water. And what video would be complete without a pied billed green? Cloudy days are at least good for reflections on the water. And muskrat swims by as a double crested cormorant takes a bath, proving that the old riddle, what gets wetter as it dries, isn't just a bath towel, but also waterfowl. And you want to talk about a challenging bird to get close to? I challenge you to try to get close to a cormorant. They take off at the drop of a hat. That was a swallow zooming by. I found some lesser scalps, they lined up for me, girl, girl, boy. And a red-breasted merganser showed up. And at first I was pretty far away from it, but it gave me a little show with a very fancy way of turning around. And he gave me a flap. Mergansers are like the love child of ducks and cormorants. Hopefully I'll see this guy again for a better photo. And the great blue heron. I watched it for a long time and it just wasn't having any luck. So we'll keep an eye on it and see where it goes. And the sun finally starts to come out a little bit and the great blue heron continues to move on in its search for fish. And the red-breasted merganser came back in light and I was able to get a couple of really good photos that show that beautiful red eye as he took a dive. And as the sun fully comes out, a bald eagle perched on a duck box dines on his latest catch. And then the great blue heron found what it was looking for. A creek all the way at the back of the wetland where the songbirds are hanging out, like this great crested flycatcher and this rose-breasted grosbeak. And the vultures are there too because the herons have been there for a while now, picking large fish out of this overflow creek. And there are maybe too many great blue herons there. While there's only one in this video, this creek was lined with about 20 of them, and they're constantly battling for territory. It got me to thinking, what kind of damage can a great blue heron do with that bill that spears fish like gar and carp with their hard, scaly exteriors? And the herons squabble for the best places along the creek. And after weeks of watching herons and egrets catch nothing but little tiny minnows and tadpoles. I was excited to finally try and get an opportunity of a fish almost too big to swallow. So I waited and watched. I'm tired of these egrets and their teeny tiny catches. And lo and behold, out came a monster fish half size of the heron itself. It's really neat to watch these birds. They will eat fish this size one bite two or three times and still be able to take off even though their body weight must have doubled. What a monster catch. And what a mouthful. That's it. Thank you. Please like and subscribe.